Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Adria Gould, and I work for the Department of the Navy Office of Small Business Programs. I would like you to welcome, uh, welcome you to our webinar series, which we're holding throughout the summer on various topics. I would like to direct you to our website, www.secnav.navy.mil slash smallbusiness, where you'll find a wealth of information, including the Department of the Navy Small Business Operations Plan, how to locate your small business professional, and how to do business with the Navy, and also our long-range acquisition forecast. To learn more about upcoming events, I encourage you to connect with us through our social media at facebook.com slash navyosvp, twitter.com slash don underscore osvp, and for both LinkedIn and YouTube, just search for Don OSVP. I also want to let you know that our premier event, our Don Small Business Procurement event, is coming up 31 August through 2 September. It's a virtual event. We've got a great agenda planned, so I encourage you to register at www.navygoldcoast.org. Lastly, for your calendars, please mark for our next webinar, which is July 30th, with Ms. Bianca Henderson from the Navy Facilities Command. I would now like to introduce Mr. Dan DeConzo. He is the Small Business Director at the Naval Warfare Systems Command. Over to you, Dan. Thank you very much. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Dan DeConzo, and I'm the Supervisory Director for the Office of Small Business Programs here at NAVWAR headquarters in San Diego. And I've been here since midway through the month of January. It was um, a nice transition over to NAVWAR. I moved from a 92 mile commute one way to Corona to approximately three and a half miles uh, here in San Diego to my new office. One of the things that I really wanted to do when I got here was to make sure that I didn't spend too much time sitting at the desk, but getting out actually, spending time meeting our competencies, uh, talking with our program offices, going out and really spending time talking to our customers. And I really felt that I did that early on when I got there. And you know, when you have eight competencies and a number of program offices and DPNs, you find out that, that it can take a while to get to know everyone and get out there and get a chance to meet everyone. But I definitely walk the command regularly every day. And uh, I'm kind of grateful I did that when I started because, you know, soon after I got there, uh, the pandemic hit and uh, we all kind of moved off the base and into our homes. So, I'm really grateful that uh, I did get a chance while I was there early on to spend some time walking the command and meeting the various customers. And I can tell you from spending time out there talking face to face with leadership at NAVOR, with all the deputy program managers, going out and talking with each of the competencies, uh, the command is firmly committed to small business. I've had a number of one-on-one -on -one chats with various leaders at the command, and including the Admiral, Admiral Becker, and everyone there has shown nothing but admirable support for the small business program, for the OSBP office, and for the mission of really including small business in everything that we do. So, um, I'm kind of setting up the, the message today to ensure that everyone knows that uh, NAVWAR headquarters, although an Echelon 2 command, with some very uh, large priorities, very large programs, uh, they're very committed to, to small business. And over the last few months, I've received uh, full support. I've received absolute autonomy in achieving our goals and running the team to make sure that we are also very committed to enhancing the small business program. So hopefully today during the slide deck, you're gonna see some of the things that we're doing in the office. You're also gonna get a chance to meet my team and you'll see the wealth of experience that we have that represents you here at NAVBOR in the small business office. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about our long range forecast. And then I'm also, trying to give you a little bit of a vision of where we plan to go here in the next, uh, the next couple of years. So uh, we're on the first slide now. Let's go to the next slide, please.
So we're going to do a team overview. We're going to get a chance to uh, hear from each of my team members. Uh, we'll talk about some of the assignments. That way you'll know as we talk a little bit about the long range forecast, you'll have a real good idea of um, who your point of contact is. And I think that's very important over some of the emails that I've read the last couple of months. Uh, you know, when you, when you have a command the size of the law command uh, with all the different layers, uh, it can sometimes be a challenge, especially now when we're in an environment where it's basically phone calls and emails. Uh, that's the, the primary capability that we have to communicate with our various competencies. And knowing that you don't have the ability to just walk in and talk with folks can be a challenge. So hopefully we'll be able to provide a little light on uh, some of the techniques that you can use to, to navigate through the competencies. Uh, we'll talk about our goals and achievements some of the planned events that we have coming up here in the near future. We'll talk about our acquisition highlights and then a, a quick view of what's ahead. Next slide, please. So this information that you see right here, this is also on our command fact sheet. So I'm pretty sure at this particular time, most of you have our outward pointing, public facing website and you'll see that at the end of the slide deck. I certainly uh, encourage you to go there. Uh, I've made sure that this has been updated on a regular basis to not only reflect new employees that have come aboard, but to make sure that uh, the contact information, the phone numbers, the emails, and things of that nature will be available uh, to everyone who, um, who accesses the fact sheet. So here's the name of uh, some of the folks in my office, Angela King, Tuan Dome, Mr. Caleb Foster, and I believe each of them are, are online right now, and I'd like for you to be able to just hear a little bit about their background real quick before we move on. Angela, are you available? I'm present. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you give a little background? My name is Angela King, and I've been in the Navajo Small Business Office since 2016. I came from Nywick Pacific um, in the Contracts Department before that. And um, I'm glad to be here. Great. Juan? Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Tuan Doan. I work in the small business office with Dan, uh, going on my fifth year working in the small business office. Prior to this, I worked at NAVSUP as an auditor, and prior to that, I was in contracts at NAWIC Pacific for seven years. Uh, my primary customers are NAVWAR contract branches 2.2 and 2.4, which is the communications branch and the international programs branch. Uh, what that means for those of you external to NAVWAR is I'm the primary small business POC for PMWs 170, 770, 740, MIDS, and JITNIC. Uh, so if you have any questions or concerns regarding those program offices, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. Thanks, Juan. Caleb? Good morning. My name is Caleb Foster. I'm the newest member of the NAVWAR team. I've been in the seat for about three weeks so far. I came from NSWC Corona. I'm a five-year contracting specialist. Uh, about six months ago or in January, I became the acting deputy director at NSWC Corona uh, before I took this position at NAVWAR. I will be supporting uh, 2.5 Naval Enterprise Information Systems, Fleet Readiness and Space, and Naval Enterprise Network Systems, uh, meaning PO EIS and PO Space Systems. Over. Great, thank you. So you can kind of see by uh, just a little brief introduction that uh, the team has a wealth of background in not only acquisition, but in small business, and uh, they're very familiar with the competencies and the alignments that they're assigned to. So let's go to the next slide, please. So in here, you can also see uh, team members from Nywick Lant, and uh, we've got Robin Rourke. Uh, Robin will be coming on right after this presentation at approximately 10.30 to talk a little bit about her program, along with uh, Beth Chiquetti, 
Ida. And uh, I encourage you to stick around and, and watch that presentation. So all of this information is also on our fact sheet. So when you go to our website, you can uh, gain access to any of this information. Uh, the hyperlinks are, hyperlinks are embedded into the fact sheet, so you can just click and read through it. Next slide, please. So the way we've got things aligned as of right now in my office is uh, it's kind of a stove pipe format. We have each of the deputy directors aligned to a particular set of program offices, PMWs, and competencies. And this slide here kind of shows you who your point of contact might be uh, when you're dealing with uh, trying to contact uh, either a program office or you're interested in talking about a particular effort that we may have out on the street or something that's uh, forecasted to uh, release by the end of the fiscal year. Uh, we've done this in this way, that way, in the event that uh, one of our folks is out, not available, or on leave, maybe in training, uh, then we kind of have a seamless base to, uh, to cover all the support for each of the competencies. So um, this also is aligned directly to acquisition uh, in code 2.0, as you can see, also shows you who your point of contact there is as well. So since we'll probably not be doing a lot of face-to-face -face events here in the very near future, um, I'm hoping that this slide will at least give you an idea of uh, which folks you need to reach out to in order to get answers to some of your questions. So please, I encourage you to, uh, to reach out to our fact sheet and uh, find your point of contact on there for any of our upcoming efforts. Next slide, please. So how we're trending this year, uh, as you know, most likely the previous year's accomplishments uh, normally end up being the follow-on year targets. And uh, so the better we do, the better we'll need to do the following year. And uh, I think that's a nice stretch goal for the commands. It gives us the ability to really find out a lot of the things that we did well uh, versus maybe some of the things that weren't as effective. So as you can see by our FY19 achievements and targets, uh, we definitely hit those targets. And to date, we ran some numbers uh, early in July. And as you can see, we're trending around 28% this year with a target of around 31.5%. So not genuinely concerning when you hit the, the final quarter of the fiscal year to be a few percent below our targets. Uh, historically, as you know, a lot of our acquisitions get awarded in the final quarter of the fiscal year. And uh, Nancy Gunderson and her team at 2.0, uh, they run a very tight ship, uh, very professional, and uh, um, no question whatsoever that uh, we'll get all of our acquisitions on the street by the end of the fiscal year. Last year, in the final quarter of the fiscal year, we did approximately 3%. Uh, of additional uh, small business. So um, I would believe that this year we would do an additional 3%, which will put us right around 31%, give or take a few percentile points. Uh, but I would say that uh, I'm pretty confident that we will be able to hit our, our targets again this year. And I think the I think the, the major accomplishment here is last year, you know, we were doing this, the team was running this program uh, in the midst of normal conditions, if you will. Uh, and here we are uh, in the final quarter of the fiscal year uh, in the midst of a, a major pandemic that has, we all know, affected all layers of our community, of our small business programs. And here we are within a few percentile of once again hitting our targets this fiscal year. So I think that's a major accomplishment for small business, showing your resilience, showing your professionalism and your ability to uh, deal with adversity. Uh, no question whatsoever. We know that because we've been talking to you on a daily basis. Uh, we've been having regular discussions and forums on these topics on how we can continue to support you. And the fact that here we are, uh, the end of the fiscal year, still running our numbers very, very well and continuing to hit our targets is, uh, I think, an overall achievement for NAVWAR, small business team, 
once again, all of our uh, business space that consists of all the professionals out there. Next slide, please. So some of the events that we have coming up, uh, really grateful to a number of folks that have reached out to us recently to participate in um, some of our upcoming events. Uh, I got a call yesterday from a gentleman by the name of Dennis Rudloff, who uh, invited us to come out and present at the upcoming uh, Gold Coast event. And, uh, you know, I was really impressed by our discussion because Dennis was making comment that one of his real important concerns moving forward is to make sure that we maintain the integrity of some of these programs that, uh, you know, as we invite folks to come out and talk at these events and we invite VIPs to present, um, he's very, very interested in ensuring that we don't lose the integrity of the small business program, that uh, we continue to invite folks that can talk to small business. And so he's invited me to come out to to say a few words uh, at the Gold Coast and talk about small business. And, and hopefully, you know, when we, uh, we actually get to that event, uh, there'll be some changes uh, with the industry, with, within the community, within the pandemic. So we'll have some, some better news to present by that time. So, so we've got uh, an event coming up uh, on 5 August, which is our NDIA Small Business Roundtable. And we're going to have uh, Ms. Nancy Gunderson from Code 2.0 will be talking. Uh, we have uh, Greg Geisen who's going to talk a little bit about the revitalization program. We have uh, we, Richard Jones is going to be talking a little bit about our CMMC, latest information that we have pertaining to CMMC and how that's going to impact our small businesses moving forward. Uh, I'll be there to talk about a few things. So. It'll be a great event. Uh, I really highly encourage you to reach out to NDIA to make sure that you register for that event on 5 August. Virtual Gold Coast will be 31 August to 2 September. We'll be uh, participating in that as well. I also believe they're gonna be doing a, a fireside chat form. Uh, Ms. Cindy Shavers uh, is gonna be leading that charge to uh, be talking to some of our uh, acquisition uh, leaders across the country and throughout the different syscoms as well as our uh, executive director, Mr. John Pope, will uh, be presenting at another forum, uh, another fireside chat. So uh, this is going to be a great event this year. I highly encourage everyone to engage that event, which is uh, 31 August to 2 September. And then we just recently uh, received word that we'll be doing the Small Business Training Week again, uh, 9 through 11 September this year. And as more information comes out of that, we'll keep you posted. Next slide, please. Okay, so I'm going to roll through these slides real quick. We want to make sure we get through everything before we, um, before Robin comes up at 1030. So if we can just kind of toggle through these slides, please, Destiny, uh, just giving a couple moments for everybody to look at these. I popped these on the slide deck here. We can just keep moving to the next slide. The reason I put these on here is so when you do get the slide deck, uh, this is going to give you the ability to be able to correlate uh, the program offices along with the alignment that I showed you in the previous slides. So that way, if you have questions on these, you'll know exactly who to go to and uh, how to get this, uh, your questions addressed for this. We've got a number of small business set-asides that are scheduled to come out for the remainder of the year, a number of them that have already come out this year, which once again um, is definitely just commendable for uh, Nancy Gunderson and her team and being able to really put small business as a priority. And right here at the bottom of our screen on this particular slide, uh, here's our public facing website. And here's where you can go to get not only our updated long range forecast, uh, Tuan Doan in our office uh, kind of maintains a long range forecast. He goes out and meets with the various codes to ensure that we get all the information so that we can post this information uh, as soon as we can. So uh, here's the website for that. Next slide, please. So looking ahead, uh, we've got some, uh, one of the things that I really wanted to do is to make sure that we have a consistent drumbeat with industry uh, on a regular basis, covering a, a whole host of topics. And, uh, you know, we, we hired a new guy in the office, Caleb Foster, who comes with a uh, pretty technical background. And I think it would be uh, beneficial for 
Caleb to give us a little brief update on the quarterly virtual webinar. Caleb? Yes. So, so far on the quarterly virtual webinar, we have identified Microsoft Teams as our platform that we are going to be using. Uh, through this platform, uh, I believe we'll be able to reach out to 10,000 participants with multiple uh, presenters. So we'll, as we move forward and identifying how we're going to uh, do registration and things of this nature, we're working with uh, 2.0 and the paper list to see if maybe we can leverage our e-commerce site uh, for registration, so it's seamless. Uh, but that will be coming out and we'll be posting, uh, if you're in our Rolodex, if you've talked to one of our deputies, we have, we have an internal Rolodex, also we'll be posting notices on uh, Beta Sam. So just stay tuned and look forward to that coming at the uh, first of the year. Over. Great, thanks Caleb. So, you know, we've got a, uh, we've got a great boardroom in my office uh, and I really feel confident uh, that we could maintain some social distancing in the office and actually bring folks in uh, one or two at a time to be able to uh, do these fireside chats and be able to talk directly to industry and uh, find out what's going on because I think industry as well as our office is very interested to find out you know how this pandemic has affected business how has it affected the way we do business uh, what are the, some of the things that we need to consider moving forward you know what if things never really go back to the way we did business before? So I think this is a great way for us to, to address those questions and to really mitigate some of the, the challenges that we might have to face here moving forward. And I think uh, doing these webinars on a regular basis, so, you know, we're thinking quarterly right now, uh, but we do have the capacity because it's virtual that we could do these things, uh, you know, impromptu, do them as we need them, as important items come up. Uh, we can just present it to industry. So we're hoping to be a consistent drumbeat of information from headquarters uh, to the rest of the syscoms as well as industry so that uh, we can keep everybody informed. Uh, we're very involved in the Mentor-Protege program uh, with OSBP, and uh, we continue to move forward in that program. Intern rotations, I feel, is a great opportunity to be able to share the knowledge from our office as well as the various competencies, the various program offices. Uh, my vision, we have an empty desk in my office. Um, one of the things that I'm really envisioning is, is, is having folks from the program offices come over and spend a little time in our office. If we don't get back to doing the office environment anytime soon, uh, we can certainly set this up in a virtual environment. The objective here is just to make sure that that our program offices and our, our DPMs who are designated as our small business advocates for the command have the opportunity to spend time with us to find out exactly what goes on in our office and the impact that we really strive to make uh, for small business for the command. Uh, we'd like to have some of our uh, DSBs rotating the program offices. Uh, same scenario, we wanna, we wanna have my folks learning about uh, what goes on directly in the program offices, working side by side with the DPMs and finding out exactly what we can do to continue to provide excellent support to our customers. Uh, meeting the DPMs fireside chat, uh, that's one of the things I'd love to see so that industry can get a chance to take a look at that the, the inner makeup of our command to meet some of the folks behind the scenes um, and find out what some of the stuff is going on uh, within the program offices through our DPNs, because like I've mentioned, they are considered our small business advocates for the command, and uh, they do a great job. They lean in regularly with me uh, regarding uh, events, regarding meetings, and inviting me to different staff meetings, and, and I very much appreciate that. So I'd really like for you to get a chance to meet them as well. Uh, our upcoming webinars, I think, is gonna be a phenomenal opportunity for for everyone to get a chance to find out exactly what's going on in the office. Uh, we have lots of friends in San Diego. Uh, Mr. Jim Laswell uh, has done a great job in really uh, publicizing a lot of information from our office, as well as a number of different events going on in San Diego that he's orchestrated. And uh, we really appreciate Jim and uh, all of his team over there at Indus and NDIA. So thank you very much. And, also keeping an open line of communication 
for the OSVP team is, I think, very, very important. Uh, you know, we've tried to really work out the phone line situation as uh, all of us are working from home at this particular time and making sure that our phones forward over here uh, to us. So uh, I believe we've kind of addressed that issue to make sure that if folks do give us a call, uh, that we do have the ability to uh, answer those calls and uh, respond to those calls. So, so I really have a great vision moving forward. Uh, I've only been here since uh, February. But I can tell you we're very confident that, uh, that the leadership of the command is truly supportive of the program and uh, is uh, fully supportive of us continuing to have a, a consistent drumbeat. As you know, uh, Mr. Pat Sullivan will be retiring very soon. I believe that this Thursday will be his official retirement ceremony. Uh, we bid him farewell and the best of luck, sir, in the future. He's been a strong supporter of the small business program ever since I've been here and ever since I've known Mr. Sullivan. And we're certainly going to miss him. Uh, Mr. John Pope uh, is our new executive director and uh, we have uh, nothing but respect for Mr. Pope. Uh, I called him a couple of weeks ago, sent out an email and invited him to participate at our upcoming Gold Coast. And he basically, without a second's delay, I jumped on board and will be participating in Gold Coast. So that's just once again, just to show you that our command is fully supportive. Uh, Admiral Becker will be leaving us very soon. And uh, also a total advocate for small business programs. And uh, with that being said, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, over. Thank you very much, Dan. Great overview of what you do in support of small businesses out there at Nav4. Um, we did have some questions come in just to let you know that we don't have time right now so we can do the other half of the program but we will get everything out to the participants um, here in the next couple of weeks. Um, our next speaker is Robin Rourke. She is the Deputy Director of the Office of Small Business Programs at the Naval Information Warfare Center Atlantic located in Charleston, South Carolina and Robin will be given an overview of NYWIC Atlantic. Over to you Robin. Thank you Adrian. Um, just a quick sound check. Is everything okay with my voice here? Okay, first slide. Um, just a quick overview of what we do at NYWIC Atlantic, and then I'm going to roll into our Information Warfare Research Project. PM will have some information on that as our guest speaker today. Go ahead with the next slide, Destiny. Thank you. So our mission here at LAN is um, delivering information warfare solutions, and that includes comm systems, network systems, cyber, and business systems. And you can see a couple of um, our platforms are on ships, vehicles, subs, um, and also from the business side, we have the enterprise data system. And our vision for the command is to win the information war. All right, next slide. This is a quick snapshot of where we're located and kind of some background of our workforce and our small business. You can see last year we obligated about $3.5 billion and 46% 40 of that um, was set aside for small business and that included over 400 small business firms. Um, just a note, we are a Navy Working Capital Fund which means we're not mission funded and we rely on sales revenue rather than direct, the direct appropriations from Congress. So it makes our business run a little different than most. Um, and again, the technical leadership there is just for your information. Uh, we employ a lot of scientists and engineers and um, a couple of PhDs. Next slide. Uh, just a quick shot. Uh, these are the type of NAICS that supports the comms, the networking, the cyber. Mainly uh, our obligations are at the engineering services NAICS and then those uh, supply type items that support the comms, including the radio, television, the electronic computer, software, and computer design. Next slide. All right, this is a quick snapshot of our contract strategy. 
So if you want to be a part of our uh, contract workforce, this is kind of how you plug in. Our primary vehicle is Seaport NextGen. We also use a little bit of ITES. Um, we have a couple of niche type contracts, including um, what we call our 8A incubator, uh, multiple award, which right now is in the review stage. We're hoping for an award on that by August. Um, we also have some niche type DARPA contracts, air traffic control, um, and for our cyber specific work, we have two command wide contracts. One is a services type for our top secret work and the other one you can see under the supplies is our cyber mission systems for the end item work. For our supply type work, we rely on SOUP and ITES. And we also have a couple of niche contracts there. You'll see the IC and the IBCS, which is shipboard type work. And then and, uh, we're gonna spend some time today with our new program manager for the Information Warfare Research Project, OT, Other Transaction. And this has been, as you'll see, a very successful tool for NAVWAR. It's for rapid innovation and prototyping and fielding. All right, next slide. Uh, just a couple of things here I wanted to bring to your attention. Um, like Dan was talking about, we love getting in front of you guys and talking to you and communicating and, you know, part of it is outreach. So our next event will be 24 August tentatively for our Tidewater area in Norfolk. <clears throat> the web page and the link is right there. And we just had our quarterly event here in Charleston last week. Um, we have one on the books for October. Again, that web page is right there. And just a quick snapshot of our e-commerce um, web page where you can see that we do monthly forecast for our task orders. And we post it right there under that news tab. And also um, Dan was talking about our long range. That's also where that's posted under the news tab. So if you want to understand what we do and how we do it, this is the page that you need to bookmark. All right, next slide, please. Okay, for this next slide, I'm gonna ask Ida Lorette, our Office, office of uh, Small Business in New Orleans, just to do a quick shot of what our for public industry page. Thank you, Robin. Can you hear me okay? Um, but thank you for giving me the opportunity to give a briefing over our um, NIOWIC Atlantic OSBP homepage. As you can tell from the slide on our homepage, we provide extensive information. Two areas highlighted on this slide are the active contract list and the latest briefings for the SBIOIs and the technical exchange events. Again, this was a brief overview. This page provides a lot of information and one of the, you can find the e-commerce link and many more, much more information. Um, if you would like more information, please look on this page and you'll find our OSBP general mailbox email uh, address. And you'll also provide, we provide the email addresses for each of our staff members, Robin, Beth, and myself. Again, this was a very brief overview. So thank you, Robin, and thank you all for listening. And if you have any more questions, please contact us. Back to you, Robin. Thank you, Ida. Absolutely, this is a really quick high-level overview. Um, and we have our information on all these bookmarks and Dan provided it as well. Just give us a call or email. We'll answer any question that you have. I think that's it, Destiny, my last slide. All right, that's it. So I um, wanted to make time for our guest speaker, uh, Ji Yoon Fickling. She's our brand new program manager for our IWRP OT. Um, she re transition, recently transitioned from supporting the Marine Corps projects to the IWRP in June, and we are excited to um, hear what she has to say about this vehicle. Ji Yoon, over to you. Hey, can everybody hear me? Okay, I think we're good. Um, Destiny, if you could go to the first slide. Thank you. 
So um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you about Information Warfare Research Project. As Robin said, I'm the new PM um, for IWRP, and um, I've been on board since uh, June of uh, this year. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? And one more. Thank you. So IWRP um, has a mission to collaborate between the government, industry, and academia. And the mi main um, collaboration ideas are to develop um, from concept to prototype and support of the Navy and Marine Corps. Um, before I go on, I just want to make sure, is everything OK with the slide deck? We're good? OK. So we can go to the next slide. So IWRP uses an alternative acquisition method called Other Transaction Authority. And um, you can see that highlighted in blue on the screen. Um, it uh, operates under the authority of 10 USC 2371B, which is for prototype projects. Um, the rest of the slide, what it reflects is that IWRP enables rapid research for information warfare, and it increases access to commercial solutions um, based on defense requirements. So if we can move to the next slide. Thank you. So before we go into the uh, video, um, I just wanted to say the full first full operational year for IWRP was 2019. And the Public Affairs Office um, put together a year in review of 2019, which I think captures um, the success of the program, as well as some major milestones. So if you can start the video, that'd be great. No, we're just two HR officers from two organizations that have come together to change the Navy. And the IWRP has allowed us that environment to do that. The industry partners that I'm involved with have really appreciated the fact that within a couple of months, they'll know whether or not their product um, has been selected. We were trying to fast track a program that's absolutely needed by our current warfighters in the field. Our demographic is a sailor operating system that he wasn't even trained to operate because the person assigned to that just got killed when we the ship took around, it's on fire, it's taken on water, and there's still power to his system, he's got to operate to save the ship. The goal of IWP is to rapidly bring information warfare, innovation, and technology into the hands of our warfighters. And the reason we need to be fast is because what's going on with our adversaries. If you look at China, if you look at Russia, if you look at some of the other small nations, they're very much ramping up their ability to communicate, shoot, and move faster. And if we don't find a way to make sure that we stay ahead of the curb, they're gonna crush us. And they don't have to crush us in strength, they have to be able to crush us in technology. One project that has benefited from the IWRP process is the Authoritative Data Environment 3.0. The Authoritative Data Environment 3.0 is the third generation of a single source of truth uh, for human resource matters. So for example, the, the Authoritative Data Environment 3.0 provides a platform uh, for a future in which you, know, you could have a mobile app that provides you access to your HR record. And if you move, you could update your address in that app. And that gets fed to the ADE, and then the ADE feeds it to everyone who needs to know about it. It saves the warfighter an extreme amount of time and stress. Another project that's benefited from the IW process is the Marine Corps Low Altitude Range Communication System. LARCS uh, gives the current warfighter a capability that has never been seen before. If the pilot perceives something going wrong really quick, the system makes it easy, e a lot easier than the old systems, to communicate with the pilot to let them know, hey, 
cease and abort a mission, don't drop here, fly here, change your course because of the way the system is set up to make it easier for the operator to push his communication buttons to talk to who he needs to talk to without having to depend on multiple physical assets spread across a dispatch center. Industry um, really is incentivized by this process in the fact that they feel like they're contributing uh, their technologies, their services in a rapid manner that's actually supporting the warfighter in a time where we need to accelerate delivery of technologies. ADE 3.0 was the first successful prototype to use the IWRP, and we are now moving to be the first in the Navy to use the IWRP to go to a production environment. Our goal for ADE 3.0 is to be fully in a production environment by December 2021. Our goal without the IWRP would have been possibly 2024. So the IWRP has created an environment where we could actually go from an idea to delivered code in eight months at a cost of $20 million cheaper than our competitor architecture. We are scheduled at this time to bring online with NYWIC in February of 2020 a full run of our LARCs. The IWRP actually streamlined that ability for us. It could take a couple of years to several years. The IWRP allowed us to feel this within months. To get involved in IWRP, industry partners should first reach out to our publicly facing website, theiwrp.org. Uh, from there, they will get information about the consortium. It exists as a consortium, and they'd be put in contact with the consortium manager, an industry partner that managed the consortium and then they can figure out how the process to join the consortium and then they will have access on an ongoing basis to the projects to develop prototypes and to meet the warfighters needs. The ability to go from white paper to demonstration to prototype to production, there really is no other vehicle, contracting vehicle, that enables this. Thanks, Destiny. Um, if we could go back to the slide deck. So while the slide deck's being pulled up, I just wanted to say that was a glimpse into IWRP in its first uh, fully operational year. So you can see it was an exciting time and a lot was accomplished. Um, mainly what was talked about is prototyping. So I thought it'd be good for you to understand what we mean by a prototype. So on this slide is a very broad definition of what a prototype is and what it's meant to do. So of note on this side, um, it shows that a prototype project um, has, is used to evaluate the technical or manufacturing feasibility or utility. So that's the main purpose when we're, um, when we're evaluating a prototype project to see if it meets those needs. And then it, on this slide, it shows also what a prototype can be. So these are just examples and then what it may include, and you can see the examples listed below. Um, of note, um, to the right of the slide, you'll see um, some information about the quantity. And what we need to recognize is that the quantity for a prototype product should be limited because um, all we're checking is to make sure that it can meet the feasibility or the utility for the requirements. Next slide, please. And as Mr. Reddy said in the um, video, IWRP uses a consortium-based approach. And right initially, there were 14 technology areas. Um, recently, we just added one more. So I believe it is the sixth bullet. You will see DevSecOps. We just added that as another technology area. So we have moved from 14 to now 15 technology areas that are included in the scope of IWRP. Next slide, please. So a little history and some updates on IWRP. Um, first bullet 
NIWIC Atlantic uh, awarded a OTA to ATI, um, Advanced Technology International, on 26 June 2018. Initially, the ceiling was $100 million and the period of performance was three years. Um, recently, Secretary Gertz uh, approved a ceiling increase and a period of performance extension for NAVWAR's IWRP, just um, based upon the fact that we have been so successful over the past two years. So to note, we have we added an additional four hundred million dollars in approved execution. So total execution authority now is five hundred million for IWRP. We added an additional two years to the period of performance. So now we have a total of a five-year period of performance. So ultimately, what this means is there are more opportunities to the consortium members. Next slide, please. So since October 2019, we have made 49 awards, um, leading the Navy and the Marine Corps in the number of prototype awards. Um, we've awarded 68 million in ceiling across those 49 awards, and this is uh, way ahead of our initial forecasting, which is one of the reasons why we had the increase in ceiling and period performance extensions. And then we have 141 million more in reserve ceiling, just based upon our current workflow as of today. Um, I, provide, I provided a graph below that breaks down the prototype awards by those, uh, what was 14 technology areas and now is 15. And so you can see a breakout of um, the technology areas that have had awards to date. And the one that has had the most is the enterprise resource tools. Next slide, please. So there are many, many membership, uh, membership benefits, um, but uh, I, I don't wanna read through them all, but I do wanna bring your attention to the fact that there are frequent opportunities for networking and collaboration um, for government and industry leaders. So uh, if you go down to the fourth bullet, you'll see that there were more than 800 structured collaboration events between industry and government to discuss technology and innovation since the inception of IWRP. And so I, I didn't list them all, but to give you an example, we have quarterly industry events, we have virtual collaboration events between stakeholders and interested members, and obviously we participate in um, events uh, like ANTX and small business. Next slide, please. So before I get into the breakdown of who, what makes up the membership, I wanted to give you a definition of what a non-traditional membership looks like. So in the very broad sense, uh, non-traditional refers to a technology partner provider that doesn't typically do business with the government. So in other words, uh, often a small business. And then you can see, um, the definition below uh, for the narrow scope of what is considered a non-traditional defense contractor um, related to CAS cost accounting standards. Next slide, please. So as of 24 July, um, this is our membership breakdown. We have 602 members. Um, you can see a significant portion of them um, are non-traditional therefore meaning small business, and uh, which also includes the, if you go to the pie chart below, it breaks out with small business being 72%, large being about um, 25, and we also have academia included and, um, and some not-for-profits. And then we also broke out the membership of uh, IWRP by technology area, so you could also see that information um, broken out between the 14, what was 14 technology areas. Thank you, next slide. 
So this is our schedule of events and um, for fiscal year 2021, uh, we, our next event will be a virtual uh, industry day, which is currently scheduled for 18th through 20th of August. Um, we can provide more information to those who are interested in that event. And um, we also have our first quarterly uh, industry day scheduled for October uh, of uh, 20. But at this point, it's supposed to be a face-to-face -face engagement here in Charleston. Just with um, the current situation, it looks like this will probably be going to virtual as well. And then in uh, second quarter, fiscal year 21, we are scheduled for a face-to-face -face industry day in Norfolk, Virginia. And so um, that's what we're planning for at this point. If things change, we will certainly let everybody know and put the information on our external um, website. Below you will see points of contact you will have um, and our uh, website and for the points of contact include the agreements officers for both NIWIC uh, Lant and NIWIC Pacific. Next slide please. This is just general contact information for you. If you have general questions you that is the uh, email address you can um, send your questions to. If you have any contract related questions, um, ATI is our consortium management firm. So um, the program manager, uh, his information is included in there along with our internal Spay War wiki site or public site. And then if you just have any general OTA questions, you can access this DAU site, which is actually very helpful and can provide a lot of answers. Next slide, please. Okay, so that is it for me, and I hope everyone stays safe and healthy, and I will turn it over to you. Destiny, I'm not sure if I'm turning it over to you. Destiny, are we going back to Robin, or did that finish the presentation for the NAVWAR seminar? Hey, this is Robin. We're finished. We're ready for Q&A, Adrian. Okay, great. We got in a couple questions. Um, I'm not sure if Dan and his team are online. I think both of these are for them. Um, the first one is we are HUBZone 8A and Small Disadvantage VOSB. We are also CMMI Dev Slash SVC Level 3, ISO 20K, ISO 9K, ISO 27001. We have our own low code slash no code platform. How can we help you meet your HUBZone numbers for FY20? Okay, I think I can go ahead and take this one. Um, okay. So the, the best way to reach out so we can understand your capability is to contact any of us at NAVOR headquarters or NIWIC Lant, wherever you want to target or both. And um, we'll listen to your capability and uh, try to give you some advice. I would say um, it's fourth quarter, so I don't think um, it's a little late for um, meeting our numbers in fiscal year 20, but definitely um, reach out and we'll try to get you squared away. Thank you for the question. Great, Robin, thanks for answering that for us. Uh, second question, where would AFHE programs fall within and global slash KBR slash BAE fall? So I think this question is about our fuel handling uh, niche type contract. So I would ask that Mr. Bird reach out to me or any of us at NAWIC Lant and we can pick apart his question and get him um, some information to get him in the right direction as well. Great, thank you. So I don't see any other questions that have come in. Um, I would like to thank both Dan, Robin, and their teams for the overviews of NAVWAR and NIWAC Atlantic. Um, I think some great information to show how you support and engage small business. Um, 
would like to remind folks again to sign up for the small business procurement event in at www.navygoldcoast.org and for the questions that we did get in we will get formal answers and we will get those sent to all webinar participants and we'll get them posted on navy osvp's website i think that ends the webinar so thank you everybody for attending look forward to seeing you at a future webinar and have a great navy day